Hey everybody, uh, I think a few of you have seen my review of a polling chainsaw that I bought for about 120 bucks with tax. It lasted about 25-30 hours of true actual use and it's completely consumed. I could probably put another ring in it. It only has a one ring, but this is $120 with tax. And this is, what would you say, 370 Yep. About 370 for this one and this is a Johnsonet. And you don't see too many of these around here. Uh, you've probably seen it as a Husqvarna. Now Husqvarna does not make their own chainsaws. Actually, Johnsrud makes theirs. Johnsrud is, is the name of the town where they used to make these. Now it's made in Husqvarna, Sweden. And whenever you're buying a chainsaw, something I keep in mind, it's kind of like buying a full-size truck. You can buy a Japanese one, which is fine, but uh, normally full-size trucks are made here. Well, I mean, because we have a use for them and we know more about them. Same thing with chainsaws. If you want to buy a good chainsaw, buy an organ, buy something where um, the people who make them actually have to use them. And I hope that makes sense to people because in Sweden they have a lot of trees and uh, there's a lot of logging that goes on there. So, Giant's Root is a very well trusted brand, even though a lot of people around here in uh, the South and the U.S. are going to buy the Home Light, which is fine. Home Lights are fine. There's nothing wrong with them, but there is something better. This Echo. Domar, uh, anything in that range, still, you know, some are going to be better than others. I personally like Echo, but I like the Swedish stuff because it's so well made. And uh, <clears throat> you'll see the same thing as Husqvarna. It'll be the typical orange, but it just looks different because it's red and black. This one has the automatic chain adjuster. And you just flip this out. This is a friend's sauce. So I'm not really used to it yet, but you can adjust that. You don't have to have a tool. And then you adjust up and down to adjust the tension. And uh, that's a typical break, blade break. Uh, you don't have to have a tool. Well, they say you don't have to, but these clips, you do have to have something. But you won't normally take this cover off. Uh, uses 50 to 1 fuel ratio. And everything seems to be very high quality on it. And I think we'll just go ahead and crank it up and let you see how it sounds. Oh, also, something I wanted to show you. It has a compression release. It has a little release valve. Now I'm used to this on big board dirt bikes. You have to pop open their compression release and you can you know, run it through a few times before you actually crank it. But this one pops up once it's running and I don't really understand that. Now do I, I need to push this down? Okay, I'm going to push that down. Normally that would be completely opposite but that's something we're still trying to figure out. It doesn't say anything about it in the manual. Let's see what uh, Sweden can do for us. Pull that out. Out and up. Okay. I'll show everyone what I'm doing here. Mine, a piece of junk here, it has the two. They have incorporated this into one, which I like. It's something, you get rid of moving parts, you have less to fill. So you pull that out and up. That's your switch on and your choke, which is pretty simple. That's it.